extra point kicking and with the roof open as we say they used to open up the roof here a lot the stadium old Keyshawn Martin about four yards in will bring the ball back out to the 27 yard line and now the crowd will respond to Case Keenum who played his college ball here at the University of Houston he actually played five seasons because he had a couple of medical red shirts NCAA career leader in passing yardage so well known in these parts undrafted practice squad all of last year number three guy behind Matt Schaub and TJ Yates until two weeks ago when he gets a start in Kansas City they lost the game but he played well out of the pistol right to the air good protection and the first pass is incomplete intended for Foster broken up by Angerer and let's take a look at the Texans offense Case Keenum, University of Houston, Third Ward Cougars. Arian Foster, University of Tennessee. Greg Jones, Florida State University. Andre Johnson, the U. DeAndre Hopkins, Clemson University. Eric Graham, Wisconsin. Dwayne Brown, Virginia Tech. Wade Smith, the University of Memphis. Chris Myers, Miami Palmetto Middle School. Brandon Brooks, Miami of Ohio. Derek Newton, Arkansas State. Second and 10 from the 27 yard line. Keenum took almost every snap in shotgun or pistol in Kansas City. Here off the fake. Being chased. Gets a block. Throws. Caught. For a first down by Devere Posey. So extending the play and running around and keeping it alive. And several seconds later after Eric Walden couldn't chase him down, he completes the pass. It's exactly what he did in Kansas City to create some big plays. They tried the bootleg action. It wasn't there. So he just scrambles around a la Russell Wilson and picks up a first down. There's Matt Schaub, who got off to a disastrous start this season, throwing pick six in four straight games. Then he was hurt and inactive in Kansas City. Meanwhile, Ben Tate is now in as the running back. Runs a boot to the right side. Wide open and down the field goes Andre Jackson for his first touchdown in a long time. Andre Johnson had caught 48 passes this season without getting into the end zone. And what a start for the Texans. How about this start? Come out here again a little out and up to Andre Johnson, the best quarterback for the Colts. Vontae Davis bites all over it. And if you think this crowd was excited before the game, look at them now. Randy Bullock for the point after. Johnson had caught 74 passes going back to last season without getting into the end zone. We played one minute. And the Texans lead seven to nothing. In order to throw the ball, you have to fool this guy every once in a while. Robert Mathis chasing the stretch play down the line, wasn't there for the bootleg. And then Andre Johnson working against Fonte Davis, simple little out and up. Davis goes for the interception, and it is over. And Case Keenum, as advertised, as he has done so many times at the University of Houston, as he did against the Kansas City Chiefs, delivering big plays already. Well, you talked about the buzz, the electricity, the feeling. That it's always a great feeling when somebody new can take over, and especially with the type of year that the Texans were having. And even though they lost to Kansas City, he played very well that day and a perfect start tonight. It was so much fun talking to him. He kind of has that swagger we talked about. And he goes, what do I have to lose? He says, if I'm getting a chance, I'm going down slinging it. I don't care. I'm taking my shots. I may not get another chance. And so far, so good. Stanley Havili, USC. Darius Hayward Bay, Dirty Turps. T.Y. Hilton, FIU. Kobe Fleener, Stanford. Anthony Costanzo, Boston College. Hugh Thornton, Illinois. Sasha Zatella, Hawaii. Mike McGlenn, Pitt. Goster Sherrillis, BC. Well, Andrew Luck saying to us last night, you know, one of the things you worry about in a noisy place on the road, something bad happening, and how do you respond? 
So a minute into the game, something bad happened, and we'll see how they respond. Luck buys time, comes back the other way, and wide open is Kobe Fleener, his Stanford mate, and Fleener, who had a big night two weeks ago when we had them on a Sunday against Denver, gets taken down by Sharpton after a gain of 44 on the Colts' first offensive play. Uh, this is one of the toughest plays to defend in the league. You're going to fake a block with your tight end here. They go bootleg, delay, delay, delay. Now there's nobody wheeling back out of the backfield. And this game has started with a wild flare to it. It is a Texas shootout right off the bat. A minute and a half into the game. Trent Richardson is the running back. They picked him up from Cleveland in September. The fake to him. Luck has time. The pass is too high. Intended for Kobe Fleener. Let's take a look at the Texans defense. J.J. Watt, Wisconsin. Earl Mitchell, Arizona. Antonio Smith, Shaolin Temple. Brooks Reed, University of Arizona. Daryl Sharpton, the U. Joe Mays, North Dakota State University. Whitney Marcellus, Illinois. Kareem Jackson, University of Alabama. DJ Swanger, University of South Carolina. Ed Reed, I was born to do this. J. Joe, Rock Hill. One guy missing, Brian Cushing, whose season ended with a broken leg in Kansas City two weeks ago. Second year in a row that Cushing has gone down. On second and 10, going nowhere is Trent Richardson averaging just three yards per carry this season, collectively with Cleveland and Indianapolis will be third down and 10. Well, one thing that they are going to have to take care of today is J.J. Watt right here talking with Pep Hamilton. He said, I'm going to try and double team him on every play. <laughs> he said, I've never seen a game record like him since Randy White back in the days of the Dallas Cowboys. That time unable to get him stopped. Third and ten. They go five wide, including setting Richardson to the outside and then it's a screen to T.Y. Hilton and he'll fight for a gain of six there's a flag down our first of the game referee is Bill Vinovich that was a third and ten and the gain was good for seven yards. Ineligible receiver downfield. Offense on the 64. Five yard penalty. Repeat third down. If you want to decline it. If you want the penalty, he said. So their, their option is do you want it to be fourth and three and in field goal range, or do you want it to be third down and assess the penalty? Penalty. They've elected to decline the penalty. Yeah, as long as you have Case Keenum around, you're just going to score about 60 points. <laughs> well, it's changed strategy. Usually you come in against a terrific young quarterback and Andrew Luck. You want to try and limit all their points, but they have a little confidence in what their offense can do finally. That was a pretty interesting call. I mean, that could have gone either way for Kubiak. As you know, if you decline it, you have a 42-yard attempt, which is pretty easy for Adam Vinatieri. The oldest player in the league will be 41 at the end of December. And the kick is blocked, so it works out perfectly for them. It's blocked, and coming back the other way, inside the 30 is DJ Swearinger. So everything perfect right now, as J.J. Watt got in there, Watt so used to swatting down passes, he'll block kicks, he'll block everything. This guy's got radar. J.J. Watt right over this gap right there. He's going to get those big paws up and get another one. And it falls perfectly to Swearinger on the outside. Boy, everything is breaking perfectly for this team that knew this was it. This is the game. This is their playoffs. This is the first place team. If they can't beat the Colts at home tonight, their season is pretty much done, and they know it. Terrific first three minutes for the Texans. Everything going right. 
takes the running back. Play fake over the middle. Pass is caught. Andre Johnson, and that's a first down to the 25-yard line. Angerer making the tackle. Well, Houston really hasn't even tried to run the football as of yet. And yet, just the fact that Case Keenum has been in there and they've hit some passes, they have at least established the threat of it. Case Keenum, who only ran three plays under center in that entire Kansas City game, they're under center play action work. Three receivers to the right, takes in the backfield. Case going to take the inside handoff and a gain of six. Let's take a look at the Indianapolis defense. Corey Redding, Texas. O'Brien Franklin, Tennessee. Ricky G. Francois, Carroll City. Eric Walden, Dublin High. Pat Anger, Iowa. Jarrell Freeman, Mary Harden Baylor. Robert Mathis, Alabama a &M. Cassius Vaughn, Ole Miss. Antoine Bethea, Howard. Ryan Landry, LSU. Vontae Davis, Dunbar Senior High School, D.C. Vaughn starting for Tolu tonight. Mathis leading the league in sacks with 11 and a half through their first seven games on a record pace. On second and four, and off Tate swings to the outside with those four broken ribs, and is very close to a first down. But they making the stop. They're really trying to bring pressure now. The Colts' defense is they had Antoine Bethay right up on the tight end on the line of scrimmage, just trying to clog everything up. Here he is. So they've got man coverage across the board, and they are really attacking as they typically do. But that time. Tate with a nice little bounce out run, but his slide at the end of that cost him a first down. Greg Nemeski looking on, his team's already yielded a touchdown right now, third and one from the 16 yard line. And they give it to Tate, and Tate is going to get stopped in the backfield. That's Ricky Jean Francois, the first guy to hit him and make sure he could not keep those legs going and pick up the first down. So now what will Kubiak do is fourth down and one. Here we go, right there. Just wore out Wade Smith on that one. That's a tremendous play, and I go back again. I think if Ben Tate doesn't slide down there, he's going to pick up that first down, and now they're forced to go for it. Fourth and one, at least lining up to go for it. You've got Tate, you've got Greg Jones, the fullback, in front of him. Extra leverage with the tight end moving to the left side. Graham, and the handoff going to the running back, and he's going to get stuck short of the first down. So it's the in vogue thing right now in the league. Almost all coaches going for it in similar situations on fourth and short. This time it doesn't work. And the Colts stop him and take over. 7 0 Houston. Back inside the building. Indy stopping them on fourth down. Colts now from the 16 yard line. Toss goes to Trent Richardson. And it's a gain of seven for him. Well, Gary Kubiak took over here. It's his eighth season. Team came into the league in 02. Dom Capers coached the team the first four years. David Carr was their first ever pick. Kubiak then inherited Carr for a season, made the trade for Matt Schaub, who's been the guy since then. And Gary taking this team to the playoffs in each of the last two years. And each of those years, they won a wild card game against the Bengals. Second down and three. And looking for room this time is Richardson. And he does find it as he cuts it back to the middle first down. Let's go back to that second down run that ended up being the decisive one and Ben Tate's going to just slide down here and I think the referee spot the ball right there because of that slide. Now maybe you say he slipped on the play but when you are that close to the first down I know he has the back ribs but you have to put your shoulders down and go get that one. And then two more runs could not net that yard and Indianapolis after taking over to the 31 yard line for a game of four. Andrew Luck picked number one. Colts had that two and 14 season when Peyton Manning couldn't play, didn't know what his future would be. And of course, that was the end of Peyton in Indianapolis. So with the number one pick in the draft, when it could have been Luck or it could have been RG3, they opted for this guy. And Chuck Pagano in his second season as the head coach has found the Hulk Diamond. At least he hopes he has. Getting closer to it. <laughs> Second and six from the 11, or the 31 yard line. On the only three yards of carry in a close uniform. Third and four. And what? And the pass 
is dropped. That was dropped at the 40 yard line by T.Y. Hilton right there. Would have been a first down. In comes back to be not a punt. Well, there's your first Reggie Wayne kind of moment. This can't be any more wide open. Double slant, just a very basic route, and it worked perfectly. Ball thrown a little behind, but we'll keep an eye on this tonight. How many times will they not convert without Reggie Wayne in those key third down situations? And drop passes have been the bugaboo for the Colts over the last two years, and in good measure, cost them one of their losses this year to San Diego. And it's dropped by McAfee. McAfee looking for some room to punt. He's able to get it away and does get the kick away. And he turns what would have been a little bit of a disaster with a flag down in a punt that goes to the 12-yard line. So he's running around in the backfield. And, of course, when you do that, everybody's going downfield. It would be a 55-yard kick, but... Ineligible member of the kicking team, illegally downfield number 58. Five yard penalty, repeat fourth down. Which is almost certain to happen in a circumstance like that. Yeah, I think 58 and about seven other guys <laughs> 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 illegally down the field. But for McAfee, he certainly has been in the spotlight a lot lately. Already had a big tackle in this game tonight after that blocked field goal. Almost drops this one, had the big hit in the Denver game. Well, he's getting a lot of attention here lately. Well, that's not the worst thing in the world. It only costs him five yards. It gives him a chance to kick another one. 45 and a half average this season. Gross. Well, it's special teams. Not off to a very good start, are they? Mm -hmm. Ooh! And that one appeared to be partially blocked. Brian Raymond came in. And it takes a good Texans bounce and finally gets down to the 44 yard line. That was a 29 yard kick. So all kinds of special teams issues early in the game for the Indianapolis Colts with Houston leading 7 to nothing. For the complete viewing experience, check out NBC Sports Live Extra, NBCSports.com. Michelle and Mike Florio, you can chat with them. Ryan Dean, the uh, former Colts. Offensive lineman protected uh, Peyton Manning so well for so many years. Social media reports. There's Reggie Wayne going back to the locker room. Meanwhile, the Texans got away with one, which we'll show you in a minute. He should look for all the world like part of that punt was blocked, at least partially in a nine-yard gain here for Ben Tate. This looks like, if you're the referee, it looks like part of the ball was gotten by Brayman. Here comes McAfee. Brayman's right there, but as you can see, Brayman goes right into McAfee. The ball never touches Brayman. Thus, it should have been roughing on Brayman, and it should have been a Houston or a, an Indianapolis first down. But it's a judgment call and not reviewable. So it's second down and one at the 48-yard line. And Tate goes to the outside. And then takes it to the 41-yard line for a first down. Well, this is sort of an interesting twist for the Houston Texans, a team that typically has to try and run the football to set up their passing game. They come out tonight with Case Keenum and throw the ball all over the park, which now has established their ability to run the football. Now they get back to their stretch play. Now they're cutting people on the ground. Now they're starting to look like the Houston Texans. Tate is in there with that hamstring issue bothering Foster. Tate's done the heavy lifting to this point. And Carroll's here for no gain. Tackled by Robert Mathis. And Tate has already carried the ball now seven times for 25 yards. Well, Robert Mathis probably doesn't get enough credit for this, and that's his ability to play the run. And he will take chances, jump inside on occasion. That time he just felt it, and guy very happy to be getting a chance to play on that rush side of this defense. Second and ten. Fine time again. Even going deep, and it is caught. Andre Johnson again for the touchdown. pass over the head and arms of Antoine Bethay, 41 yards, and the second touchdown for Johnson tonight. 
Well, Andre Johnson doesn't even know what he's going to do. Watch Andre right in the middle of the field. He's just going to kind of slow down. He doesn't know where his quarterback is, and then he sees the ball in the air and takes off and just goes to get it. You better not relax on Case Keenum because I don't think he knows what he's going to do. I don't think Andre Johnson knows what he's going to do, but so far he keeps sticking the ball in the end zone. Texans cash in after they get away with what should have been a five-game losing streak. Lead 14-6. Coming up this week on the uh, Tonight Show, the Houston City Hall. Let's hope he does as well late night as Case Keenum is doing. Boy, I'm telling you, he's sort of the red downs it in the end zone. And the Colts take over at the 20, already down by two touchdowns. Thanks in good part to Johnson. Well, the former president, George Bush, 41, lives here in Houston. Former Secretary of State James Baker, Houston resident as well, taking in the game here at Reliance Stadium. And right now their team up 14 to nothing. The ball to the 20-yard line. Donald Brown is the running back. Fake toss to him and then the pass out to Griff Whalen. And Whalen is going to get a lot of opportunities now with Reggie Wayne down. Whalen who played at Stanford. Pep Hamilton was the offensive coordinator there for Luck and for Whalen. So uh, the Cardinal connection here. That's a gain of six at second down and four. And Griff Whalen is going to be the guy asked to fill some of those shoes of Reggie Wayne. Former roommates with Andrew Luck at Stanford. So between he and Kobe Fleener, there is plenty of old connections for him to fall back on from the Stanford days. Here's Brown. And Donald Brown down the sideline. And out of bounds he goes. Pushed out finally by the longtime former Raven Ed Reed. Now in Houston, your number one here. 24-yard game. Throwing the old stretch play back on him. Watch. Goster Sherless over here on the back side making that final push. But for Donald Brown, here's a guy that really has now sort of taken over the big play role as far as the running game's concerned. They thought maybe Trent Richardson would become that, but really it's been Donald Brown. From the 50 on first down. And luck jostled as he throws, intended for Whalen, covered by Jonathan Joseph, second down and 10. And see, that's the perfect example right there of a position before in which Reggie Wayne is the guy that Andrew Luck just looks for. In this case now, you could see him sort of scanning the field a little bit. Griff Whalen was on this side. He didn't get the first look. He sort of relaxed on the route when he saw Luck looking away from him. They're going to have to find some inside energy from a receiver to make this offense work. Through the middle, Brown, who was their number one pick out of Connecticut in 2009. He's been a guy who they were looking to to, to be their ace back, but he's never been that ace back. And this year with Vic Ballard, and they brought Ahmad Bradshaw in, they both got hurt, then they bring Richardson in. Meanwhile, Brown's doing a pretty good job. There's no denying if you take the body of work from just this year, Donald Brown's been the better player. Richardson's averaging three yards a carry, and Brown's averaging almost six. And he can catch the ball, too. And never fumbles. Third and three. And Luck gets hit as he throws, and the pass is incomplete. So Andrew getting out of the pocket. Brooks Reed was there to make contact with him fourth down they're trying a lot of Reggie Wayne plays here now they've got Griff Whalen's going to come in here and try and make a pick so they can pick up this first down but he just doesn't quite get it done in that situation so once again now we talked about Reggie Wayne during the open and so far drop balls missed opportunities they're miss a pick it's not been the same passing game been an adventure for McAfee <laughs> Nose down, backspin on the ball, and can they stop it at the one-yard line and getting down there, and it's Sergio Brown 
who gets down inside the two yard line and is able to down it there. So that will pin the Texans very deep in their own territory with less than two minutes to go in the opening quarter. Case Keenum making a name for himself in the pros as well as in college. Rays in Abilene, Texas, got a five hour drive. Went to Wiley High School, won the state's, uh, that school's only state title. Then at Houston, he played five seasons there, plus he had a, a medical redshirt his first year. Had nine touchdown passes in one game. Most career TD passes and passing yards in Division I history. He spent six years at that school. Then he doesn't get drafted, signs as a free agent here. Thus, here he is. You think of him as a rookie, though he's not. He's 25 years old. Ben Tate is the running back. We haven't seen Foster but for a play or two early in the game. As he comes back from that hamstring injury. Game of two here. Freeman makes the tackle, and we check in with Michelle. Well, and you won't see Arian Foster for the rest of the night, Al. He is out with a back injury. He's on the bench in street clothes. It was a game-time decision this week because of a hamstring. Now with him out, that leaves Ben Tate with the four broken ribs and rookie Dennis Johnson, who just got here Monday, to carry the load. All right, thank you, Michelle. And they picked up Johnson, played his college ball at Arkansas. And also Greg Jones, the fullback, who can carry on occasion, and that pass is all nearly picked off. Vontae Davis, who got beat for a touchdown here earlier tonight, but played a tremendous game, in particular against Demarius Thomas two weeks ago when they beat Denver. Yeah, this is an almost by Vontae Davis and an almost by Case Keenum. At some point, as a young player, this is what you worry about. He is such a gunslinger, and he wants to just go ahead and fire it around. But you also have to understand that's a pretty good pro on the other side you're trying to pick on, and you got him once, but be careful down here. Picked him up from Miami in a trade. Colts have made more trades than any team in the league. Over the past couple of years, on third down and 737 yards and two touchdowns tonight for Andre Johnson. Kind of a bunch formation on the outside, and the two wideouts are going to run up the field together, and then Andre Johnson is going to come back underneath seen this season, and in part because of the issues Matt Schaub has had this year. And Keenum throws, and that's incomplete, intended for DeAndre Hopkins, their number one draft choice, second and ten. You know, for Case Keenum, you, you sort of say, well, how does this guy go undrafted? He set all the records for touchdown passes and yards in college, and he said, I had a terrible combine. I won't use the word that he exactly said. He said, I went out there and I, and I, I tweaked my hamstring trying to be a track star running the 40, which all of us try to do at the combine to show off our speed. But he said, after I hurt my hamstring, it was really difficult for me to make the simplest of throws. I should have not thrown on the day, but he came back and really nobody was interested in drafting him except Houston wanted him to sign after the draft, and that's how he ends up here. You don't want to use that word? Well, it's analogous to a dice game in the casino. Yeah, if you're going to play craps at the casino, <laughs> right. that was, I don't want to make it sound like he was swearing because that's not his style right. either. But, uh, you know, he's just one of those guys when he walks in the room, he brings a little energy, and I think he's brought a little energy into this bigger room here today. A ton so far through the first quarter. It's 14 to nothing, Texas. NBC's Sunday Night Football from Houston continues after these messages. Well, Bum Phillips, a very, very popular man in these parts, and there's his son Wade, who is the defensive coordinator. J.J. Watt looked very much up to, to Bum Phillips. He died October 18th, a couple of weeks ago. What a life he lived at the age of Died at the age of 90, so close to, to Wade. He shares so many similar traits, and of course, uh, patrolling that sideline with the cowboy hat. It was beautiful. Al Michaels, Chris Collinsworth, Michelle DeFoya start the second quarter in Houston with a third and eight pass that's incomplete. We had a safety blitz that time, forcing the issue from Landry. You know, just uh, talking to Wade Phillips a little bit about his dad, he said, you know, my dad was my high school coach. He was my college coach. He was my mentor. I coached with him in the pros for 11 years, but more than all that, he was my hero, and he still was struggling with his emotions talking about him, but it really has been a, a bit of a galvanizing force for this football team after they all sort of collectively went to the service. Leckler's kick is fair caught. 
by T.Y. Hilton. Well, Bum Phillips, Oilers head coach uh, between 1975 and 1980, the Lovia Blue Years, Earl Campbell, and a lot of success in the Astrodome. And Bud Adams was the founder of this team. The Oilers came into the American Football League. Eight teams came in in 1960. Adams, one of the originals, and then moved the team in the mid-90s to Tennessee. And, of course, they right now are the Tennessee Titans. And then the new Texans came here with Bob McNair in 02. But both of them legendary figures in this area as Andrew Luck on first down is chased out of the pocket, extends the play, and the pass is incomplete. J.J. Watt was chasing him, and it will be second down and 10. You know, Andrew Luck didn't like that one, but a first down play action pass usually means you're going to take a shot, and T.Y. Hilton got behind Joseph here. I think there's enough room there to try and throw that one in. J.J. Watt applied a little pressure, but you'll see he gets behind. There's a chance. That one-on-one -on -one situation with a chance to throw it over the top is what you probably were looking for in that play in the double team. No match for J.J. Watt. Second down and 10. And a sack. Joe Mays. Played at Denver, picked him up as a free agent to help out with some injuries in the linebacker spot. And he makes it a third down and 17. Well, I think what happens is Joe Mays is reading Trent Richardson here. And when he blocks, that allows Joe Mays to come on that read blitz. And so far, everything is going Wade Phillips' way. They have a bit of an intimidation factor going right now, unable to block him. And the coverage has been holding up on the back end. Third and 17, it's a four-man rush. Luck under pressure again, and Luck's going to get sacked, and he's going to lose the ball, but if they may rule it dead at the 15-yard line. He was in the grasp at the 15-yard line. Watt, of course, was in there, and that's where they're going to rule it. Play was over at that point. Now, every once in a while, you see a motion take over a game. This defense has been waiting on their offense all season long. And now that they're getting some points, now that they're getting some play out of their quarterback, the emotion is almost just exploding out of this team defensively. And J.J. Watt has been borderline unblockable so far in this one. Back-to-back -back sacks were 24 yards. The ruling on the field is the quarterback was in the grass, progress was stopped, fourth down. That is, as we said, in the grass. And so once that was ruled there is no sack the crowd of course want, there is a sack the crowd wanted a fumble and a recovery they see the replay and of course that gets them even crazier but that's the rule well two people grabbed the quarterback and he was doubly in the grasp it was a good call McAfee catch uh, not called for and this is Keyshawn Martin grabbing it and taking it out of bounds near midfield. 13-07 to the half. 14 Colts went through the Manning era then that one dark year but that dark year led to the number one draft choice and there's a lot of brightness ahead. You would well imagine with Andrew Luckin looking into the future. But right now they're down 14 to nothing as Ben Tate takes it to the 49 yard line. Ordinarily, you love playing against the young quarterbacks like Case Keenum, but so far he's displayed a very quick release. Look at that tight motion, no waste of motion at all. Here he's in trouble, pressure coming. Gets rid of the football in about .33. That's as good as you'll see in the NFL. But it's this ability that I think plays so well with this offense because of all the stretch runs that they do. You have to have some mobility at the quarterback position to come out the other side, and maybe in his 10th year, that's what Matt Schaub was missing. Second and six. Tate will be about a yard shy of the first down. Well, the Texans had a bye week, and sometimes the coaches will go away and get a few days off, but Gary Kubiak felt it was too important to stay around and, and really give a cram course 
to his new quarterback, and that's exactly what he did. And speaking of coaches on bye weeks, our very best to John Fox, the head coach of the Denver Broncos, who was hospitalized in Charlotte, North Carolina, will undergo some surgery, might be out for a couple of weeks. And uh, John, we are thinking about you, man. Get well. Absolutely. Are. Third and one from the 46 yard line. And Tate seeing all of the action tonight. You have the hamstring for Foster. He's already in cities. Tate had those four cracked ribs in Kansas City, and they've already handed him the ball 12 times tonight. Going behind the big guys over here, Wade Smith going to get some movement on that side. And it's interesting that for all that we talked about with Gary Kubiak, how all he wanted to know was what made Case Keenum comfortable. Clearly, Case Keenum has made some adjustments, too. After being in the pistol formation or shotgun last week, tonight, much more under center getting to this run game. Now you've got Dennis Johnson, the rookie. They just picked him up. And that's a nice debut for the new Texan who picks up Nine yards, free agent out of Arkansas, to sign the last week. Yeah, but he did spend uh, the preseason right. with the Houston Texans, so he knows this offense, went off to the Browns practice squad, and then comes back here after they had all their running backs get hurt. Watched him in practice the other day. He's got some pop to him. Now, he definitely has a little speed and excitement that he adds. Second down and two from the... 34 yard line. <laughs> Another sudden star right now as Johnson picks up a first down. 11 yards. Oh, it's interesting. Greg Jones that time really had nobody to block. They end up getting the double team, the edge on the outside, and there simply is nobody there. Robert Jean Francois got hooked on the play, and right now, the Texans come out throwing big bombs around the field with Case Keenum, and now they're, for the first time maybe all season since that opening two-game win streak, they're getting back to who they are, and that's their run game. What next? You know the Booyah base? <laughs> From the 23, Tate. And he'll take the ball to the 21. Well, I tell you, the NFL we, it never ceases to amaze us. Just when you think you know what's going to happen. I mean, two weeks ago we see Indianapolis beat Denver, a huge win. Houston has lost five in a row. Third string quarterback is playing first string, and it's all Texans tonight. Go figure. But we also know it's a war of attrition, and we know that come the second half of the season, you're going to see guys that have to play, that have to come up big for particular teams. And so far tonight, Houston has the possibility of coming out of their slump with some of these young players. It's exciting to watch. From the pistol on second and eight, the pass is behind the intended receiver. DeAndre Hopkins, number one pick out of Clemson. Third down and eight. You know, you're talking about Houston. If they get on a roll next week at Arizona, and then they're home for three games in a row, including Oakland, and Jacksonville before New England comes in. Well, and and right now without Reggie Wayne, the Colts don't look like any kind of world beater, so we have to see what they're going to become. But they need a stop from this defense right now. I mean, Andrew Luck is a fine player, but you can't get down too far on the road and still have a chance. Third and eight, that's Garrett Graham in the backfield. And they send him out into the pattern. And Keenum will not get away will the ball get as it's ruled down the ball was headed out of bounds eric walden was there and just for a moment it looked as if the ball might be alive but they ruled it down but keenum rolling to his left and his knee could have been down first that's that's the ruling here the knee goes down and that's the end of the play and the ball comes loose and once the knee goes down that's it well, that, but that's a significant play, and that's one that Case Keenum is going to have to learn because he was in a much better position for this field goal. All he had to do is take the ball and flip it towards the line of scrimmage. He was outside the pocket. Let's see if it costs his team. Well, 49-yard attempt, and that one is no good. Started out wide left, looked like a screwball coming back. Might have gotten through, but no, it's just wide. Field goal no good, and he gets the ball down by two touchdowns.
Reggie Wayne, who's already had knee surgery here tonight in civvies, one of nine players in the history of the league with a thousand or more catches, 189 consecutive games. That's about 12 years worth. He's got three or more in 71 straight games. That streak will continue when he's able to play again. That's the longest streak in the history of the league. Luck to Wayne, 252 passes, second most since last year. Any QB to receiver, topped only by Matthew Stafford to Megatron. You know, Al, I have to admit, I thought Reggie Wayne was going to have an impact on this offense. I didn't think we'd be able to see it this clearly. They clearly, at least so far, don't have an answer in this line. And Luck is three out of eight. And they're trying to get something going on the ground. Up to the 44-yard line goes Trent Richardson. Let me see if I can do a better job of explaining what the slot receiver is. He's the guy that has to read the defense and the blitzes in the same way the quarterback does. When he sees multiple linebackers or a safety blitzing, he has to know to break off his route. The quarterback has no time to make adjustments at that point. So he has to trust that at least one slot receiver is going to know what to do. And I'm not sure Luck has that same kind of trust in anybody so far here tonight. Mike McGlynn, the right guard, moving. Ball start. Offense, number 78. Five-yard penalty, Still second down. Well, there's no question that a guy like Wayne makes the other guys better. T.Y. Hilton and Darius Hayward Bay. So they have new roles right now. you got to find that other guy. Will it be Griff Whalen coming out of the slot? But you did a very good job of explaining that, I thought. <laughs> but, but you know what? Their roles are simplified because Reggie handled so much of the mental aspect of the game inside. The one guy that could do it is T.Y. Hilton. He's a very intelligent young player, studies hard, and now he's in that position. Second and ten. Luck fires, that's dropped with Whalen, third down and ten. Here's Michelle. Well, as we mentioned, Reggie Wayne is here tonight. He's watching the game in the locker room. He told me it was important to be here to support his brothers, his family. He gave the speech, as I mentioned, last night to his teammates. He said, whether it's your first year or your 13th, it can end in the blink of an eye. He said, I'm living proof of that. And Al, he told me it was good for him to be here, good for his mental health. Yeah, we saw him before the game, Michelle, and he was in good spirits. I mean, for a guy who is not playing for the first time in a dozen years, but means so much to this team just to be around. Third down and ten. Pressure to gain his luck, and the pass is incomplete. They had an all-out assault on the quarterback. Whitney Merciless leading the charge, and Luck right now is 3 of 10 for 56 yards. And Wade Phillips is starting to see what I'm seeing, that there's not a comfort level with these slot receivers. Here they come with the blitz. There was no break off. There was no quick throw. There was nobody looking for a quick throw, and so Andrew Luck had to throw it away. McAfee to punt. His fourth of the night upcoming. Keyshawn Martin. Back to accept it. Rolls to the fair catch and makes it at the 10 yard line. 650. Remaining in the first half of Reliance Stadium, 14 to nothing, Texans. Move open at Reliance Stadium. Right next door, of course, was what they once called the eighth wonder of the world when it opened back in the 60s, the Astrodome. Will the Astrodome survive? There's a vote coming Tuesday as to whether they should refurbish it for a couple hundred million or raise it as an R-A-Z-E it. And we'll probably find out the uh, the fate of the Astrodome in a couple of days. From the 10 yard line, Dennis Johnson, the rookie running back, is in there. Will he fake the hand? Pressure is put on. It's away, throws to Johnson, and it's caught along the sideline. Up to the 28-yard line, he goes. And in this first half alone, five receptions for 155 yards and two touchdowns for Johnson. Do a double move there and draw all the coverage, and Andre Johnson's going to come across the field. But there is only one reason that this passing game is doing better tonight, and it's because Case Keenum has been able to move around, 
buy time, give his receivers more opportunities down the field. Tatum fires a little low, trying to hit Johnson again, incomplete. But they came in on a safety blitz to Pop Keenum. Well, and they're now going to the Kansas City strategy because Case Keenum made a lot of plays against Kansas City early on in that one. And then the Chiefs started firing the blitz at Case Keenum. And he knew it was coming. He said, listen, in this league, if you have trouble with something, you're going to see more of it. So he understood well that players like Antoine Bethea and LaRon Landry were going to be coming out of the secondary, and they have been. But he has found enough time to at least get the ball out, whereas in the last game he played, he was having some problems and taking sacks. Sack only once tonight on second down and 10. He's going to give the ball to Tate. Tate will take the ball to the 30-yard line. Short game. Under six minutes to play in the opening half. It'll be third down and eight. Oh, for Chuck Pagano, he's not used to seeing his ball club in this position, but as Pep Hamilton put it, he said, listen, we have to be committed to pain in this game. We understand we're coming in here. This is a desperate football team. They're probably going to put us in a vulnerable position early on in this game. He said, we just have to keep hammering on them, and we'll come out of it all right. Third and eight. A lot of time. Over the middle. Pass is incomplete. Good coverage that time on Hopkins. And it will be fourth down and eight. This is one of the least favorite moves for any defensive end. Watch the guard, Brandon Brooks, come back for the rib shot. Dwayne or Derek Newton does a nice job holding up Robert Mathis early. And then late, the guards like to peel off late and take that rib shot, and it definitely takes something out of pass rushes. Leckler, longtime Oakland kicker, now in his first season here, a booming kick. Fielded at the 13 by T.Y. Hilton. Hilton trying to get around the corner. He will. Hilton with a good run back and out of bounds near midfield. T.Y. Hilton bringing it back to the 48-yard line. Five minutes to the half, 14 to nothing, Texan. Well, we've talked about Case Keenum and his roots to Houston, but then there's Andrew Luck. This is really his hometown. Because Andrew Luck, his dad played quarterback for the Oilers. Oliver, from 82 through 86, was a teammate of Archie Manning. And then Andrew went to Stratford High School, three-year starter. How'd he do in the... Uh, as far as the grades are concerned, only was was the Battle of Victorian in 2008. That led him on to Stanford. So very much his hometown as well. And Luck on first down, going deep off play action, and a flag is thrown. Kareem Jackson made contact with Darius Hayward Bay, and interference is the call. That's the same play that he opted not to throw earlier to T.Y. Hilton. The exact same first down play action remember now tangled feet not supposed to be there so that's not pass interference but this one looked like more than that's that interference defense number 25 Spot foul. Automatic first down. here's what darius hayward bay can do for you run by defenses green jackson in trouble grabs the right side of the jersey twists it and that's what they call him for if he doesn't grab the jersey, probably gets away with that. 46-yard penalty, first down and goal from the seven-yard line. And Brown picks up one, second and goal from the six, Merciless, making the tackle 445 to the half. You know, usually teams want to try and run at Whitney Merciless. He's much more of a pass rusher type. The Brooks Reed, the J.J. Watt side, that's the side much tougher to run against, but they get him in space here on the outside. Works his way off the guard block and makes the play. He's had a good year so far. and goal pressure and a sack Antonio Smith getting in there well first of all you have to at least get a finger on J.J. Watt and they have, can't even do that J.J. Watt working against Sherless is going to come inside and then late you're going to get Smith here but 
if J.J. Watt flashes in your face, you have no chance. That time they had Kobe Fleener flanked out on a linebacker. Luck was trying to go that way, but immediate pressure didn't allow him to go it. Third and goal from the 11. Under pressure again. And they hit his arm as he throws. Antonio Smith, good series for him. So it's fourth and goal. Defense doing its work, holding them to a field goal attempt. That Houston defense, amazingly enough, first in the league in allowing yardage and 27th in allowing points because they've given up so many return touchdowns. Well, this is just a meeting at the quarterback, and sometimes you can just tell, Al, when a quarterback is in this kind of pressure situations, there are go-to guys that he can't find right now. Trying to put points on the board for the first time in the game, but Terry bangs it through from 30 yards. Three and a half to the half. It's now Houston 14 and Indianapolis 3. Ganga can download NFL with it because Martin. There's a room on the outside. And the ball comes loose. The ball is loose. There's Pagano in there, and he fumbles it away. So Martin. Down the sideline, what would have been a pretty good run back, a 30-yard run back. And the initial indication is that the Colts have come up with the ball as they unpile. I think Andy Studebaker created the fumble. Let's go back and take a look at it. There's Studebaker there, ball's in possession, and now here comes... That's LeVon Brazil that gets it out. Now does anybody, he kicks it back. Sergio Brown kicks it back. Nobody was standing on the line. I think this is going to hold up. I do too. I know. I know. The previous play is under review. Sergio Brown kicked it with his foot, but he was going out of bounds, but had not yet stepped out of bounds. All turnovers, automatic review. That's where they are right now. All right, they're looking at two things here. Number one, was it a fumble, which it clearly is, as we'll show it to you, with Pagano and Kubiak. So the ball is out. Martin wrapped up by Studebaker. Here comes Brazil. He's going to strip it out. So the ball is alive there. The only question would be 15. Brazil, is he out of bounds at any point while he's touching the ball? That's the other element to what they're looking at right now. If he's not, it's going to be Indianapolis's ball. He's touching it. He's not out of bounds yet. Does it hit off his knee as he goes out of bounds? I think this. I think it's going to stand as uh, as cold on the field. I do too. You don't see enough evidence there to to say that it was out of when he was out of bounds when he was touching the ball inbounds. Here comes uh, Vinovich. I think it's going to be confirmed. After reviewing the play. The ruling on the field is reversed. Ooh. Now the ball is loose. And number 15 was out of bounds and hit his left foot. Therefore, it was a fumble out of bounds. The ball be placed at the spot of the fumble, a loosened ball, first down. Very interesting. Once again, it's clearly a fumble. We talked about Brazil. He's touching the ball. He's not out of bounds yet. But as he swipes it back, does it hit the outside of his left leg with his right arm out of bounds? Apparently, they think it, it did. Wow, I didn't see that ball change direction at all. No, neither did I. I mean, you have to see conclusive evidence to overturn a call. He saw it, I didn't. Nope, surprising. Obviously a big break for the Texans, not having to give the ball away at the 28-yard line. I don't think Chuck Pagano believes it either no he's over there getting a full dose of this one. there was one other thing that was remember the punt by McAfee earlier on which looked like it was blocked but it wasn't he could have challenged that as we are discovering later in terms of the ball not touching the player and then they could have assessed a roughing the kicker foul after it was determined that the kick was not touched and anyway in any event that's water uh, under and over the bridge from the 28-yard line, put the whole bridge down. Here's Dennis Johnson. 
for a gain of a couple to the 31. I mean, just typically when you see it, you can tell when a ball changes direction. Let's see. They're saying that at that ball be, be, never altered no. its course. Before it leaves his hand, they're contending that he was out of bounds. No, he said it hit his foot. Right. Well, and while he was out of bounds, I didn't see it hit his foot. Not on that replay. Second and seven. And this is Dennis Johnson once again. Going to be a third down and short, third and two coming up. Whether it touches or not is almost impossible to tell. Just watch the flight of the ball. There, the ball is off his fingertips. Now he says it hits his foot on the back end. It sails over the foot. That ball never alters its nope. course at all. I just don't think that was the right call. No, nope. it has to be conclusive to overturn it. You saw the Colts all figuring that it was going to be their ball. We're going to tick down to the two minute warning here. And that was almost assuredly at least three points off the board now. So two minutes remaining in the opening half. Texans leading by 11 points. Coming up on the Toyota Halftime, the Chiefs unbeaten beat Buffalo today. Tony Romo rallies Dallas to a last-minute win. Bob and Hines are here, weighing in on the first half, all coming up at this time from Houston, Texas. On a 60-degree Sunday night. Texans have the ball. They have all of their timeouts. It's third down and two from their own 36-yard line. Clean and throw it downfield. He's got Johnson again. And Johnson having a monster half. Beats Darius Butler. And on a third down and two, down the field they go for a gain of 28 yards. And already tonight, 185 receiving yards for that man, number 80, Johnson. Yet another double move by Andre Johnson. Darius Butler thought he was going to do that little in and out move and come back underneath. Instead, he went deep. The personality of Case Keenum is I would rather throw it 40 yards down the field than just pick up a first down, and he's lighting it up. Johnson and he had a look over his head as he was trying to stay in bounds and couldn't. On the chalk it was. It'll be second down and ten. Boy, this was a chance for Andre Johnson. He definitely had an opportunity. See the single high safety in the middle of the field. So he knows he's just got one on one on the outside. If he could have found a way to drag those feet in bounds, but just barely thrown too wide by Case Keenum. To be able to make that play, but it's the mentality that I'm enjoying watching more than anything else. Mm -hmm. Instead of all these little throws that were really the trademark of Matt Schaub in this offense for the first half of the season, defensively, all that tape the Colts watch, you got to throw out the window at this point because this kid wants to throw everything down the field. Right now, he wants to take a timeout, and he's already thrown tonight for 196 yards, most of those, of course. To Andre Johnson Texans quarterbacks this year there's Keenum up to the minute Schaub was four out of ten more than 20 from scrimmage and TJ Yates who saw action in a couple of games subbing for Schaub 0 for 1 with a pick well and Matt Schaub in the first six games of the year had one completion of 40 or more yards Case Keenum had two last week already at least two here tonight I'm not sure how far that one was down here but this has been a different personality to the team. Do defenses eventually see this on tape and catch up? Yeah, maybe so. But at least so far, this dynamic is working. Second and ten. They dump it off over the middle. It will be caught. Taken to the 26-yard line. That's the tight end Garrett Graham. Tackled by Freeman. Well, that's a nice job out there by Ryan Harris on the right tackle position. He is now splitting time with Derek Newton, and that was a heck of a block there. So Kubiak running down the field calling for a timeout. They have one left. Sunday Night Football being brought to you by the new Windows. One experience for everything in your life. By BMW, we only make one thing, the ultimate driving machine. By Subway, train hard, eat fresh. And by Farmers, get smarter at Farmers.com. 
Friday Night Lights in Texas. Concordia Lutheran beat St. Pius the 10th. 39-38 the other night. Gary Kubek. Uh, Gary, Gary Kubiak. I think of Tony Kubek. Attended St. Pius the 10th High School. There you have it. There you have it. A little high school football. Right. Can't get any better than that. You did some time. Go support those young men out there on Friday nights. Third down and three. One time out. Remaining ball is the 27 yard line. Keenan's going to take off inside the 20. The 10 to the five yard line. He has just electrified the whole city. He is a student of the game right here. He saw the two man coverage and took advantage of it. Comes to the line of scrimmage indicating he wants to spike it. No. Nope. He's going to throw a fade for Johnson, and he makes the catch. Touchdown. Andre Johnson over Vontae Davis. Seven catches, 190 yards, and for Andre Johnson, three touchdowns. <laughs> Chase Keenum said, I'm not spiking this stinking ball. I only get to play once or twice in my life in the NFL. I'm going for it. And nobody's having more fun than Andre Johnson, maybe other than the defense, watching Case Keenum light it up. Bullock for the point after. We mentioned earlier, Johnson hadn't scored a touchdown all season. Hadn't scored a touchdown since the middle of December last year against Indianapolis. But the run was the key play. When he saw the two-man coverage, he knew there was nobody left in the middle of the field. Look at the space out here. He knew it immediately. Two deep safeties, man coverage. Here you go, just rushing four. We talked about it with Aaron Rodgers. There's always room to step up through that four-man rush. He took advantage. Most quarterbacks take a hit like that. They come up and spike the ball. Not Case Keenum. Thank you very much. One more touchdown pass for the half. Seven grabs for Johnson tonight. Johnson has 190 yards. You all know about Calvin Johnson having the second best receiving day in history last week against Dallas. The record is 336 receiving yards by Flipper Anderson of the Rams in an overtime game. Last three games as you see versus the Colts. So right now Andre Johnson's on a pace to set an NFL, re with NFL record for receiving yards in the game with a quarterback making his second ever start. Yeah, I predicted that was going to happen. Uh, of course. Yeah. It's been fun. It really has been fun. Just every once in a while there are guys that play beyond their ability. You look at Case Keenum on the practice field, which we did on Friday. Drive, of course, uh, they were the beneficiary or the Texans of a call that we think should not have been overturned. It was ruled a fumble and a recovery by Indianapolis and then overturned, contending that Brazil was out of bounds or hit his foot. We don't see that here at all. I can make a stronger case that his finger was on the ball at that point when Brazil was out of bounds. Right. But not the foot. I agree. One hand was out, the fingers on the ball. But in any event, they keep the ball, they score a touchdown, and now Luck has to throw it into the ground, pressured by J.J. Watt. As great as Case Keenum has been tonight, and he has just been tremendous, one of the exciting things for me to watch is this number one ranked defense that has been so deflated so many times you think back to all the pick sixes that have been thrown and this defense in position to win games now they are playing like wild men out there this is the kind of energy we used to see out of the Texans. Here's Brown. Donald Brown puts his head down takes the ball onto the 31 yard line. And the Colts, who have all three timeouts, but uh, appear to be content just to get back to that locker room and figure out a strategy for the second half. They're going to let the clock run down, and that's the way it's going to end. Luck has missed on his last seven passes of the half. Halftime. Go figure. 21 to 3. Colts get the second half kickoff. Coming up next to the halftime after these messages from your NBC station.
but Wade Phillips will take over as the head coach at least for the uh, the second half here then run the show Rick Dennison is the offensive coordinator one time teammate of Kubiak in Denver meanwhile the Indianapolis Colts will receive the second half kickoff kick out past the 20 the 30 and it's a good run back before he is taken out of bounds at the 42 yard line. Take a look at some of the statistics through the first 30 minutes of play and it's the big story has been Case Keenan.